Hey folks, Real Honesty with John Rithlin. I'm John Rithlin. And this is a video where first I want to give a shout out to at Belina Tweets on Twitter. She does some great videos on her YouTube channel. Should be a link in her profile. Feel free to check it out. She does some great stuff. She did a five potential NXT call-ups in 2018. <clears throat> that gave me the inspiration to think about my own video. And to think about doing something, something basically pretty much the same. You know, with my own thoughts and everything. But I'm going to do six NXT call-ups. Because I think in one is going to come with a little asterisk because it might happen sooner. Sooner in 2018. We'll see. <clears throat> but I think that NXT is going to have a wealth of people called up in 2018, which is fine. Because I'm also going to do another video about six, N six main roster talents that should go to NXT. To, you know, get a refresher course, but also freshen up their characters and maybe have some good feuds with some of the younger talents and everything. Not that they're older, <clears throat> but it could only do good for the NXT brand. And now... I'm going to start with my six NXT call-ups, potential NXT call-ups, because I, I don't know if any of these are going to happen, even though a lot of them are very likely. Number six, Andrade Cien Almas and Zelina Vega. Zelina has done wonders for Andrade's character. He's the NXT champion. This heel turn has worked so well for the guy. The guy is a money performer. He's a great athlete. <clears throat> I was proven majorly wrong when I didn't think he'd win the title from Drew McIntyre at TakeOver War Games. I'm glad I was wrong. I think this is going to be good for him and Zelina. It's going to make them an even better heel act. Zelina is a great manager. And I think that if she wanted to get back in the ring, they should bring him up to SmackDown, by the way. They should bring him almost in Vegas to SmackDown. And <clears throat> either after TakeOver New Orleans or after TakeOver Brooklyn 4. That's how you do it. It's like you make it after a big event and everything, and you add some spice to the Raw SmackDown shows right after right after those big pay-per-views. Almas and Vega will do very, very well. And if Vega <clears throat> does want to get in the ring, I think could be a very good, um, you know, SmackDown Women's Champion. If she just wants to be a manager, if they just want to have her be a manager, that's fine. She could do some spots. She is a great athlete and was a great athlete in Impact Wrestling. So hopefully... <clears throat> they are called up and used well. Andrade Cien Almas. Andrade Cien Almas, it, it's so good that he's a heel because he's much more in his element here. It's not that he wasn't a likable athlete, but the way they pushed him, no one cared. No matter how good his matches were, now they care. Now they got a reason to boo the guy. He's found, he's found his groove, and it's going to be a great 2018 in NXT and on the main roster for Andrade, hopefully. <clears throat> now, number five, No Way Jose. I think No Way Jose could go to SmackDown or Raw brand, either one. I mean, he'd go to SmackDown brand, and it would be fine. I think they might have him debut in Raw, and they might Adam Rose him almost. Like, he would get a push, and then he'll get pulled right out from under him. But No Way Jose is a really good athlete. I've seen him twice live. He's a really good performer, and I mean a really good performer. The characters, of course, goofy and that kind of stuff and whatever, but I think, I think there's a lot of potential here for a nice mid-card guy. He's not going to be a world champion. He probably, he might be a ta in a tag team, you know, with somebody on Raw or on SmackDown. Maybe him and Ty Dillinger or something like that. But No Way Jose has been in NXT long enough, <clears throat> in my opinion, at least on TV. And he hasn't been on TV for a while since, I believe, Lars Sullivan beat him up. So unless he's, like, injured and, like, out for a good amount of time, I think he should be called up the Raw after Mania. The Raw or SmackDown after Mania. And... Give him a nice little run. I mean, he, he's a good athlete and a good worker. I, that, that's just my personal opinion, of course. Number four, Undisputed Era. Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly will likely hold the NXT tag titles once. And in fact, I think they probably will very, 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 very soon. <clears throat> and by the way, I'm just going to say, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Undisputed Era, you know, won the tag team championships. Okay, I'm just saying, if you guys still heard that, sorry. But, you know, the, a lot, it's, sorry, NXT TV spoilers were all over the damn place. So that's what happened. And they will probably hold them for a good while. And they should. And Adam Cole will probably hold the NXT title very, very soon. He might hold it as soon as TakeOver Philly. He might hold it till, <clears throat> or he might hold it at TakeOver New Orleans. And in that case, almost will be called up. In fact, almost might just be a stopping point as champion, which is sad given how he's a heel. But Adam Cole and the other, you know Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish are going to be a great trio. 
You can put them in Raw or SmackDown, and they're going to have some really, really good matches. They're all really good performances, e performers, even <clears throat> Bobby Fish at, I think he's 37, 38. He's still really good in the ring. And not to be ageist, but sometimes bodies break down as you hit near 40. He's still a really good performer. All the guys are going to do really, really well. Cole's seen, obviously, as the big star since he's only 28 years old. Will he be WWE champion? It's possible, but it probably won't happen until about 2020. But, or, or, you know, who knows, by 2019, Adam Cole could be Money in the Bank winner and they could win the WWE championship. Or the Universal Championship, depending on what brand he's on. But, Undisputed Era will be called up by No Layer and TakeOver Brooklyn 4, I believe. Number three, AOP. AOP is coming up very, very soon. This is the one with the asterisks. I said. There is a chance <coughs> that they could show up, that they could show up, you know, after the Rumble. There's a chance they could show up in the Rumble. There's a chance they could attack Sheamus and Cesaro and be, and, you know, challenge him for the new, challenge him to become the new tag team champions. This is what I got happening. I think they're going to debut at Clash of Champions. And right after, say, Jinder <clears throat> loses, they're going to have AOP squash AJ. And that's going to be more of a way for Jinder to challenge Styles um, <clears throat> for the championship a little bit later. Because I think that they're going to give Jinder new henchmen. Now, the logic would actually dictate that they would interfere in the match, cause a DQ, and then you do a TV match later where AOP causes a distraction and Styles loses, which I wouldn't do that, but WWE's been stupid. <clears throat> but that's what that's what I think is going to happen with AOP. They're going to be Jinder's new henchmen. Now, if that's not the case, I actually hope they go to Raw and challenge Sheamus and Cesaro for the Tag Team Championships. Because I think they're better than henchmen. Even though they're in their early 20s, I think that they're better than being just Jinder's henchmen. But I wouldn't be surprised if they actually went that route with them. It would be dooming, <clears throat> and it would be a short shelf life, but it'd be a way to introduce them. You can introduce them on SmackDown, and then the Superstar Shake-Up right after Mania, you could put them on Raw along with Jinder. <clears throat> and that faction could dominate if they wanted to. Even though Jinder's not very good, AOP's at least a little better. I'd say bring along Ellering, because Ellering makes the AOP seem really, really good. <clears throat> but there's a bunch of potential that you could do with them. If they aren't, if they don't debut a Clash of Champions... Um, which is possible, they may not, then probably right at the Raw, Raw or SmackDown of the first of the year, they will, they will debut and they will take out whoever the tag team champions are, which I think that if that's the case, they're probably going to go to Raw and face Sheamus and Cesaro and beat him at the Royal Rumble, which I'd be for, honestly, even though Sheamus and Cesaro over as hell, AOP winning to be a nice way to do a spark and you could have... Paul Ellering make at least the TV appearances. Maybe not the house show appearances, but the TV appearances. <coughs> and number two, and this is in really no particular order as far as anybody that I like. I just want to say this much. I'm, I'm just ranking them according to the likelihood of them getting called up. Obviously, Peyton Royce and Billy Kay. I kept saying they're going to SmackDown. They're going to go to SmackDown. You get a Peyton beat Charlotte soon after um, when they call him up to SmackDown after WrestleMania. Peyton can beat Charlotte for the championship if Charlotte's still the champion. Or they could have Carmella cash in on Charlotte soon after. Or soon <clears throat> on the way to Mania. Then Charlotte beats her again. And you have that. But Peyton and Billy are going to feud with Charlotte. Um, you could probably throw Becky Lynch in the mix on in there for tag team matches. I think that there's a lot of good potential here and also maybe the idea of creating a women's tag team title to go between Raw and SmackDown, not for each show, but between Raw and SmackDown. And the champions could appear on both shows. And you could have a tournament <coughs> between, say, you could have a Raw tag team women's tournament, you know, a Raw bracket and a SmackDown bracket and one each meets at the end. Which probably means it would be like four teams each. And I think that would be a pretty good way to do it. I mean, just, just a thought. Just a thought. Just a little fancy book. But Peyton and Billy <coughs> will be called up to SmackDown at the WrestleMania. I'd be surprised if they went to Raw. Which probably means they'll go to Raw. If Emma was still there, they could call her to Raw and they could have had that trio. But nah, we can't have nice things like that. 
Anyway, number one, sanity. And this includes Nikki Cross. It, it's Eric Young, Nikki Cross, Alexander, Hungry Like the Wolf, shout out to Duran Duran, not that they're listening to this, obviously, um, and Killian Dane. Put them on, put them on Raw. Have them, if the Shield is still together, have them feud with the Shield. Imagine those matches. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen. I think Dean Ambrose is going to turn on <coughs> the Shield and break them up well before that. As a heel turns needed for him. But Sandy being on Raw just makes sense. It just makes sense and it's going to be fabulous. It's going to be well done. It's going to be well done. Please don't screw this up. Nikki Cross and Asuka could have some great matches. Nikki Cross and Sasha could have some great matches. Nikki Cross and Bailey could have some... Nikki Cross and Bailey sounds like a pretty good feud to me. <clears throat> and, you know, and of course you get to just have Dana Brooke getting destroyed by everybody because that's probably what's going to happen. Um, not that it shouldn't happen, I'm just saying, you know, Dana Brooke ain't exactly, ain't exactly, you know, great in the ring, or even competent. But those are my six NXT call-ups from, you know, in 2018. Do you guys like my fancy booking? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Are there other talents you think will be called up as opposed to the ones I suggested? Leave them in the comments. Like, share, subscribe also. It's been Marie Losty with John Rithlin. I'm John Rithlin, and I will see you soon.